Hey everybody, Jake here with TrendSpider to go over the end of year charts going into 2021. Before we start on the charts, we're just going to go over the broad markets, Bitcoin, as well as FANG stocks. But before we start that, I really want to thank everybody so much for your support to our customers who have really helped TrendSpider grow in 2020 and just overall our partners and affiliates who have really um, helped spread the word about TrendSpider in 2020 and into 2021. So um, we have some interesting stuff to look at on the monthly side of things. Remember, we're looking at the year ahead, so there's really no point in looking at the daily chart if we're looking at months ahead into the new year. So um, if you are more of a day trader, this is probably going to be pretty irrelevant to you. But if you are more of a uh, longer term trader, position trader, just overall looking at possibly where the markets could be going, um, this may be a helpful video for you. Now, remember, Anything we go over is simply just looking at the charts. I have no prediction for 2021. I do know that the Fed is in very much money printing mode, so keep that in mind. But overall, these are just charts we're looking at. Nobody has a crystal ball. And let's just look at the levels going into the year ahead. So uh, starting with SPY, you can see here that we are really kind of at this longer term zone of resistance above. This has acted as a level of resistance multiple times in the past since we uh, really started the new move up in 2020, uh, 2015. And you can see here there's been multiple times where we've either tested this dash line or this upper solid line above, and we're pretty much right there again going into the uh, new year. So if we did continue up, what I've done here is I've used Fibonacci extensions because that's really a way to gauge where we could possibly go, especially when we have no levels above to look at. So as we're hitting new all-time highs, what I've done is I've just anchored uh, a Fibonacci level, just a measured move here from the February and March capitulation here. And you can see here if the market did continue up, this 1.618 would be around $414 on SPY. So let's see if that hits. We can always pull back. Uh, as I mentioned, this is not trying to predict the markets in 2021. It's looking at levels that may be relevant. So for SPY, if we did break through this area, this 1.618 area would be something to look at. But if we did continue up, you know, this is where extensions just continue to go. So we have the 1.618, we have the 2.618, which would be way up here, which could take years. Who knows um, where, when that will happen. But Anytime you really don't have a level to watch above, and this is something I learned over the last couple of years from some of our partners who do use Fibonacci levels. Interestingly enough, I really never used Fib levels before this, but with extensions, it really makes sense. So the uh, 0.618 extensions are definitely something to keep in mind when you have nowhere to look um, other than these extensions above, meaning there's no price action or swing highs to, uh, to get an idea of where price may go from here. So SPY, let's say 414 would be the uh, 1.618 extension from those March, uh, that February, March measured move. Going into QQQ, this looks a little different. However, it's pretty much still the same. And you can see here that we do have a little bit of a different story here. So we have the same measured move February and March. But what you can see here is we've already tested the 1.618 extension and we're going for the 2.618 extension now. And notice that there's two levels above. We have diagonal resistance that's acted as a level of interest for sellers multiple times over the last couple, uh, let's say four years or so. And you can see that we haven't really tested this area. And I did this for a reason, right? I wanna show you guys how I actually add this secondary dashed line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look for more or less a zone where price has not necessarily tested this area, but has been pretty damn close. So if we go and add another area here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of start this from let's say this body here, extend it out, and you'll see here that this line pretty much becomes parallel. And instead of just having one line, we now have a zone where there's been multiple instances where price has respected these areas. Literally, price has pretty much ridden up this line perfectly. And you can see here that in uh, September of 2020, we also tested this line before pulling back. So just naturally, this would be an area to watch above. And then if we did break out of that area, this 2.618 extension would be a level above. Now, remember, these diagonal areas are a function of time. So if we moved straight up, you know, this may be the area to watch. However, if we did something like this, this 2.618 extension would be right in line with this diagonal resistance here. So remember, Prices don't go straight up. They do have a little bit of a uh, path that they need to go through. So this uh, confluence of the 2.618 and this diagonal resistance 
could be a big area for price to get through in 2021 if we did kind of uh, slowly move up rather than just going straight up. So um, that 2.618 is around 355 or so. So keep that level in mind. Remember, these are just levels. These are not magic um, areas that the, the price action is going to hit perfectly. These are just areas above that may be um, of interest for sellers if we continue to move up. Now, IWM is a really interesting one. So we have a couple different things here. We have one, this diagonal resistance that really started in 2018 that we broke out of. But we also broke out of this previous high in 2018. And you can see here, this is a confluence of resistance. So not only did we just break out of a horizontal level in 2020, but we also broke out of this diagonal resistance as well. So this is a very strong breakout. There's been a lot of action around this, uh, this line. And then finally breaking out of it is confirmation that buyers are clearly in control. So if we did continue up, this 1.618 around 221 for IWM would be an area of interest above. Now, these blue lines are simply just showing where we measured the move. So we're measuring the move from August 2018 all the way down to March of 2020. And so if we did continue up into the coming months, that 1.618 would be in a level of interest. But if we continued up from there, you know, you can see that we do have this 2.618 way up here around 299.300. Now, um, obviously, we're just looking at a year ahead. If we did move up all the way to that 2.618 extension, we'd be looking at a 40% move up, which is uh, probably highly, highly unlikely, but it's the market. I've seen crazier things happen. However, that is definitely something to consider that we have broken through this, uh, this longer term level of resistance, both on the diagonal and the horizontal side of things. Going into DIA, uh, so just the uh, Dow Jones Industrial here, you can see here that we do have um, a very similar setup that we saw on SPY, on QQQ, and you can see here that we've added this, uh, this solid line, which really connects the wicks, and then we have this secondary dash line that really takes into account some of those other times prices tested near that line, but not fully right at it. So it's always important to use a zone rather than just one particular line, and you can see here that we're pretty much right at this zone once again, and it will be really interesting to see if we actually break through. Once again, I have anchored, or I keep saying anchored because I use the anchored view app so much, but it's essentially a measured move is anchoring from a specific point. So we're starting the measured move from February to March, capitulation point here in the market, and then finally we're breaking out of those highs. So if we do break through this diagonal resistance area, this 1.618 would be a potential target above. And remember, we're using these 1.618 extensions because we don't have any other price action to, to look at or, or kind of get an idea, relatively speaking, where we could go from here. It's blue skies above. So the 1.618 is just a way to get an idea of where we could be going. Not only are Fibonacci levels pretty interesting that you know, naturally occurring in the markets and, and just overall in, the, in, just in nature, however, they are self-fulfilling prophecies. There's a lot of big money that looks at these extensions, that looks at these Fibonacci levels. So it's always important to have these on your, on your screen. So uh, 366, 367 would be an area above potentially if we did break through this, uh, this zone above. Uh, remember this diagonal resistance is a function of time. So we could easily just chop around for six months and do one of these and just ride this and then break out, break down. We have no idea what's gonna happen. That's not, our that's not our job in the market to predict. It's to look at price action and then come up with a plan from there. So um, if we do break out of this diagonal resistance, that 1.618 is around 365 to 367. Moving on to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one that is really showing some strength into, um, into 2021. You'll see here that we did break through all-time highs in the month of December. And you can see here that we're already almost at this 1.618 extension, which is right around 30,200. However, if we did continue up from there, the 2.618 extension is right around, let's say, 47,000. And honestly, it seems like a, a far number away. But with Bitcoin, as we've seen in the last couple months, this can happen very quickly. So let's see what happens going into the year ahead but it does seem like Bitcoin is really starting to break out of some really important levels that we haven't seen since uh, 2017's uh, bull market. So um, that's the only crypto I'm gonna go over, but Bitcoin is really the gold standard here as far as just 
overall getting an idea of where prices can go in the crypto side of things. Um, but uh, going into Facebook, going into the FANG stocks now, you'll see here that Facebook has really had a, I mean, it hasn't tested this 1.618 perfectly, but you can see here that it's kind of a line of best fit from the last five months of price action. So you can see here that we are starting to form this pennant. If we did try to break out of this into the new year, that 2.618 extension is right around 360 uh, to 365 on Facebook. Same thing, we measured the move from this January to March low. Um, notice that you know, each stock we go over, it's not gonna be perfect, right? Uh, because uh, Facebook hit a higher high than it did in February. So we wanna measure that move from here to here instead of just measuring that move from February to March. And so you can see here, we've already tested the 1.618 and you'll see here in a couple minutes that some of these stocks have already tested even the 2.618 and we're actually gonna move that measured move a little bit. So Facebook, <clears throat> excuse me, if we do move up, let's say 365 would be the 2.618 target above for some of those bigger institutions and retail traders that use these levels. Amazon is one that has really already made the move here. Um, so for example, if we did a FIB extension from the February and March capitulation, we're already above the 2.618. So what I wanna do is I wanna look at this capitulation that we saw in, in September, and you'll see here that this kind of creates a new measured move <clears throat> as well as um, just overall, just different FIB extensions. So here, you can see that we're at the 1.618 around let's say 4,000 and these levels are not perfect right I, I don't want to say we're gonna you know we're gonna possibly test thirty nine hundred seventy three dollars and twenty six cents because that's just not realistic the market always has zones it's not just a particular line or precise line price level that you're looking at it needs to be a zone so what I like to do if I was gonna really look at these any of these areas that we've gone over I would put a little bit of a margin of error here around the chart remember Using TrendSpider, you can easily go in and actually create an alert at the line, and you can easily increase or decrease that sensitivity. So you're not having to be alerted right at that line. You're being alerted within a zone, and that's something that you can use on any part of the upper side of the chart. Fibonacci levels, um, trend lines, moving averages, Bollinger Bands, anything that price interacts with, you can use that sensitivity feature there. So um, if we did continue up, obviously the first target would be just this previous high here, around 3,500, but it's really interesting to see that the market is hitting new highs, but Amazon is nowhere near its highs yet. We're still probably uh, around 10% below its highs. So um, is this a laggard to the market? We'll have to see, but overall the Amazon monthly chart did have a little bit of a different measured move. We measured that move from September, and so that 1.618 would be around 4,000, the 2.618 would be around 4,600, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. Apple's another one that's already hit that 2.618 from the, the March measured move. So we're going to move that to the September capitulation here. And you'll see that we already have tested this previous high. And uh, if we did continue through this area, this 1.618 extension around 160 would be a potential target above. Now, if we did break through that, that 2.618 around 194 would be a potential target above. And keep in mind, when... When Apple really starts to go, it generally goes for months. You can see it here, uh, five months in a row. You can see it here, uh, also five months in a row, but a bigger move. So, you know, if we just kind of cloned this measured move here, that would actually put us above the 2.618. So let's see what happens going into the new year. As I mentioned, the Fed is printing a lot of money. As much as the economy and the stock market are disconnected, you have to remember that they're not always the same. So um, Apple, let's see if we can break through this previous high and close through it. But all in all, we are showing some pretty strong strength in Apple going into the new year. Now let's go to Netflix. Netflix is one that's really been stuck in a range for quite a while. And you'll see here that uh, we are just uh, chopping around for the last six months and then you know, every time we, we seem to be catching somewhat of a bid, we just get pulled back down. So the main thing is to really get out of this range here. And so if we turn on the volume by price and just kind of anchor that from this pivot here, you'll see that we are starting to form a little bit of a volume shelf here. You'll see that definitely there are uh, shares that have been accumulated in this area, creating kind of a base for price possibly to move up. We'll just have to see what happens going into the year ahead.
So um, that is Netflix. Let's go to Google. Google is one that is really looking a little different than all the other FANG stocks. So you can see here that we tested this 1.618 area perfectly. That's not always going to happen. Um, but in this case, it did. And this is the same thing. We measured the move from February to March because we still had that 2.618 way up here. So in this case, using the 1.618, we barely missed this line. And this is where that alert sensitivity comes in. If we zoom in, notice we missed this line by like three to five dollars. So if you would have simply just had a sensitivity alert in there and had some sensitivity around this line, you would have easily been able to capture um, that move without missing it by three to five dollars. So um, especially for position traders are not always going to be in front of your computer. That's why the alert system is really nice. So you can kind of capture these moves without having to be right on the money. So if we did continue through this 1.618 around 1850, the next measured move, uh, excuse me, the next extension from this Mar February March measured move would be around 2.618 or so. And uh, that is around uh, 2.618. The 2.618 extension would be around 23 to $2,400. Remember, this is not an exact price point. You know, I always find it interesting where people are like, oh yeah, my next level is 269 and 33 cents. It's just a number, right? You wanna have a zone, you wanna have a general range that you're looking at, not just one particular price. So as far as Google goes, we've already tested that 1.618, the 2.618's above, and uh, we'll have to see what happens. So that is just a general overview into uh, 2021. Remember, this is not a, uh, a video to predict the markets and using um, you know, these Fibonacci levels to tell you where price is going. It's simply telling you where price could go if we continue to move up and the Fed continues to print money like it's been doing for um, pretty much the entirety of its existence. So um, that's why the market always goes up. It's really a, it's just a gauge of inflation. And uh, overall, as the S&P, as these indexes um, kind of rebalance, it's, they're always having the strongest stocks in the market. So that's why the, these indexes continue to go up. Um, and, uh, and, and it's, it's always interesting to see, you know, everyone thinks the market's going to crash and they're just waiting for it to crash. Could it crash? Yes. But notice even in, um, even in February, March, this massive crash is just a blip on the screen. It's, it's really not something that, um, it, you know, it's not something that's always a guarantee. The market can stay, um, you know, uh, rational a lot longer than you can, especially uh, when, when you have solvency issues. So, uh, especially people on margin, people that are just being irresponsible trying to short the market. Just keep in mind that a lot of people have tried that and a lot of people have lost a lot of money. I'm not promoting that the market only goes up um, in the short term because there are chops and there are uh, peaks and valleys, but over the long term, there's a reason the market continues to go up. So um, let's see what happens into uh, 2021. 2020 was a crazy year. Um, th we are really fortunate enough at TrendSpider to have a great year simply because um, all of our partners, all of our customers continue to help us spread the word about the platform. We're really looking forward to 2021. We're about to start a project on our mobile app. So that's, I know, a huge requests that we have all the time. So I don't have an ETA on that, but I can promise you guys that we have started the project and that we are excited to get that out to our users. Once again, everyone, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video. If you do want to try out TrendSpider and just give it a try, um, there's a lot of different features that I didn't cover in here, um, but uh, that is something that you can go in and try for yourself uh, using the seven day free trial. So uh, just sign up. You have seven days free. If you need an extension, we can extend that free trial for you if you need it, just to have a little more time checking out the platform. I would really recommend checking out the alert system, checking out the raindrop charts, checking out the anchored volume by price, the anchored view app. Remember the anchored volume by price is simply just the ability to move this um, point around and say, all right, well, what's, what's the volume distribution since this capitulation in March? And it will quickly tell you that and this is something that's proprietary to TrendSpider because the rest of the market or the rest of the products in the market that uh, have, have charting platforms, you really have to go in and actually define that range manually. Where here you can visually just do it and move it around very easily. And you'll see every time I'm moving this, it's changing up the, uh, 
the anchored volume by price uh, volume nodes on the right hand side here. So there's a lot of things you can try with TrendSpider. Um, this is really a platform to make things more efficient, optimize the whole process of technical analysis. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. You can reach out to our Twitter DMs. They're always open. Hello at TrendSpider.com if you're a current customer and you have a question. And uh, if you did like this video, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. And remember, this video was not here to um, predict the markets into 2021. It was to simply look at some levels and get ready for the new year. Hope everyone has a great new year. Thank you for watching and have a great day.